So after nine weeks and some pretty good critical acclaim and high viewing numbers apparently, The Last of Us finale is here. As always, I'm Al, this is the Geek in Review. And I'm going to get straight into spoilers for this episode, so if you haven't seen it, this is your only warning. But, first of all, thanks for taking the time to choose to watch this video. I really appreciate it, and if you leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel, I'd really appreciate that as well. But we've got them all the way through the season. Well, not every episode, I thought they'd get used a little bit more. But it opens with a flashback this week of a young woman running across a field away from, you assume, the infected. And it turns out it's Ellie's mum. And this whole opening bit when she's running away from them to get to the house in the middle of nowhere, it felt very Walking Dead. And I'm going to talk about that in my season review of The Last of Us, so make sure you don't miss it, it'll be coming out in a few days. But anyway, and yeah, the woman's not just pregnant, she's given birth, her water's broke, so we see Ellie come into the world. But she's attacked by one of the infected, so this is the whole Ellie immunity story, I guess that's what we're getting. And that was a savage attack, but it was even more of a miracle birth. Like, she doesn't even notice that she's had the baby, and can that happen? I, don't, I honestly don't know if that can happen. If you know if that can happen, let me know in the comments below. But it was all very clean, is, I guess, what I'm saying. But not the flashback that I was expecting, to be honest. I don't really get the point of this scene here. I mean, we already know that Ellie's immune, so we see her get her name and then get the knife that she's been carrying around. But yeah, I don't get it. Because I thought the twist was going to be that her mum was immune as well and that's how it was passed on. But she's not. She's been bitten. Marlene shows up, tries to save her. And then grants her wish and kills her before she turns. And as I keep saying in my other reviews, I've not played the game. But is this scene in it? I don't know because sometimes you can tell what's the game and what's not. It was a nice scene, I suppose, but for me it didn't really add anything or give us any more information that we didn't already know because Ellie's not spoke about her past. She does later on in this episode, but it's something that we're already aware of, so this scene doesn't really fill anything in. But anyway, back to the present. And a question is, how long does canned food last as well? Because it's been 20 years, like, I don't think canned food can last that long, can it? But we pick up with the main two characters, and you can tell that Ellie's still shaking from last week, and they're still looking for the fireflies. But while she's a little bit more low-key, there's definitely a change in Joel's character. He's now upbeat, having finally accepted her. And I wish that they'd done this sooner, as the moody Joel kind of got a little bit tedious and it felt a little bit like Terminator and John Connor and Terminator 2. And this just feels all a little bit better and it works a little bit better. And speaking of working, they're learning to work together. But yeah, they want to go up a skyscraper again to look around. They'd done this in the episode when they were in Kansas City and at the time I thought, why are they doing that? Why are you trapping yourself in a huge building with no way out? Loads of things could go wrong. So I don't really get the logic behind this. Why trap yourself somewhere just to get a view? And this building is completely unfinished and it really seems, let's be honest, unsafe as fuck. And if there's a giraffe running around, what the hell else is going to be running around this city? And at this moment, Joel does suggest going back to Tommy's and Ellie basically tells him to forget about it. She wants to finish what they've started because they're so close. And she talks about what they're going to do once they've met the Fireflies and, you know, they've got Ellie's blood. So when she's talking about that and sort of setting up the future, I thought, she is dead. Because when characters talk about what they're going to do after this, you know, in like Vietnam movies and Second World War movies, that guy never makes it out alive. But Joel just sort of agrees with her and he fills her in on how he got his scar. And that was a pretty sort of touching scene, you know, it did make sense that Joel would have tried to kill himself after the events that we'd seen in the first episode. But with the flashbacks I was talking about earlier on, I expected more flashbacks of Joel and what he was up to after the fall. We had quite a few mentions of it when Tommy showed back up, but I think this has been a missed opportunity throughout the season to fill in these blanks. They might do it in season two, and I do think if they do a spin-off from this show, which is more than likely, it'll probably be a prequel series set between the fall and then the story of that we're getting in this show. 
But yeah, I really enjoyed Joel in this episode and where the character went. And we get the father and daughter moment that we've been waiting for all the way throughout the season. And it's all said without, you know, being said, but you can just tell how these two characters feel about each other. But anyway, while they're looking for the Fireflies, they get caught, well, by the Fireflies, and Marlene shows back up. And I didn't expect that, because every character that they've introduced in this show, they've killed off. And I think that's something that's hampered the show, is that there's no real secondary characters, or not enough of them, for you to care about. Kathleen, I thought, was going to be a recurring antagonist for a few episodes, and she was out. And then the Sam and Henry stuff as well. They were only around for a few episodes. Bill and Frank, enough said about that. But yeah, the best episode. But after that, they were out. So one of the problems this show's had for me is it's focused too much on the main two and it's not developed the world enough. So I was glad to see Marlene show back up here. So they tell Joel what they plan to do to Ellie and it's surgery to remove a sample of the cordyceps from her body to try and develop a cure. And Joel straight away realises what this means. The virus is in your brain, so they're going to have to cut open her brain to get the virus. And you know, she's not going to make it back from that. So Joel's lost one daughter, and Marlene here, you know, is being completely realistic. That she says, it's one life versus the fate of humanity. And she's right. Like, you know what Joel's going to do, but you know that she's right. And you know that he's just going to overcome logic and do what he's got to do. So she sends him packing, and you know, let's say he's going to be back. I'll be back. And man, he really does love kneecapping people when he tries to make his escape. And in talking about bits that you can tell are from the game, you can clearly get the feeling that this is something that's been pulled directly out of The Last of Us game. It also does remind me of the scene in the first Terminator movie when Arnie says, I'll be back, and then basically goes up and guns down that police station. But what do you guys think? One, have you played the game? Is this in it? And two, does it remind you of that Terminator shootout? So Joel saves Ellie by killing a lot, and I mean a lot, of fireflies. And the guy is literally the Terminator. I know I made that comparison, but that is exactly what he's like. He does not care at all. He just wants to get her back. But just as you think they're about to escape, Marlene catches up with them and reiterates what she said again, that look at the price of what it is and what it's worth. And the rest of it is told through flashback after the escape, but Joel doesn't just shoot her, he goes back and kills her to make sure that she's dead so that they won't follow her. So when Elliot wakes up, Joel has to come up with a story and he tells her it turns out that there was dozens of immune people that have been found so they didn't really need her or they didn't need as much of her or as much from her as they actually did and because she was unconscious after they were captured by the fireflies and then went straight into the surgery she's got no reason not to believe him. He also tells her that the hospital was attacked and that's why they've had to go back on the run and they're on their own. So I kind of didn't see this twist coming i mean even if he told them the truth they can't go back anyway given what he's done so they're always going to have to avoid the fireflies or at least the area that they've just came from so yeah i'm not too sure how i feel about that but again the performances with pedro pascal and bella ramsey here were pretty solid and i did think before we get the flashback of marlene getting killed that he was going to leave her alive and she was going to be a recurring villain maybe in the next season. I don't know if that happens in the games or if there are any differences here. If there are, let me know in the comments below. But I'm glad we get to see Marlene back for a little bit. So they're going to Wyoming and back to Tommy. But during this whole long drive montage, it highlights another problem with the show for me is all the way through it in the flashbacks in the present we've heard references to bandits and raiders. We've only ever really seen them once or twice, but it seems like this was an incredibly long drive and they didn't get assaulted or attacked or anything like that. So it does bother me a little bit. But then, just when they're about to get back to Tommy's encampment, Ellie tells Joel about having to kill Riley once they both got bit. And we don't see a flashback of it. Again, another missed opportunity with the flashbacks. 
because they could have just easily filmed that scene in a couple of minutes. I know it would have been longer in real life, probably a day or something like that, but why not fill us in and show it? But although it's the finale of the season, it's not really the finale of the story, because there is a second game, and there's probably going to be a second season, let us say. This finale is all about the emotional closure for both of them. The last things that Ellie says is she makes him promise that the story that he's told her is true, and I didn't really get that, because I mentioned a moment ago, even if he told her the truth and she wanted to go back, they can't go back, they will kill them both on sight, well at least definitely him. So it did seem kind of random to me, but I get in terms of the story how it's going to work, because obviously Ellie's going to find out at some point that Joel's lied to her, and that's going to destroy all the goodwill and camaraderie and father-daughter stuff that they've got between them. So if they do do a season two, that's probably what happens. Does it happen in the second game? Let me know below, or you can reach out to me on Twitter at The Geeks Review. But yeah, not the longest episode. It was only 42 minutes. I did expect it to be a little bit longer, but it was much quicker paced than most of the episodes that we've got this season. We've got some good backstories, real development here, especially with Joel, who again made the relationship more with father and daughter rather than Arnie and John Connor. And the acting is always solid. But this, when you think about it, was sort of the first Joel-focused episode we got as the rest of the season was mostly Ellie or from other characters' point of view. Even the stuff, you know, with Tommy, but this was like solely Joel on his own, and I really liked that. But I wish we'd got a little bit more of it earlier on in the season. Now, I didn't review every episode of the show, but as I mentioned earlier on in the video, I'm doing a full review of the season, and that should be out sometime in the next few days. If you've made it this far, thanks again for watching, and please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, as I'm adding more videos all the time, and not just Star Trek. But if you do like the Star Trek stuff, I'm doing even more Star Trek stuff. So like and subscribe, and I'm out. Thanks for watching.